A bunch of you have projectiles, something that launches off in your roller coaster, which is really cool. And there's some cool math you can do for that. Um, we've done bits of this math before, but we really haven't done this in class, so this is all new. The basic equation we're working with is distance equals rate times time. I'm going to write change in horizontal position equals um, horizontal velocity times time. Horizontally, the thing isn't going to accelerate, so that equation is great. But vertically, the thing has some acceleration. The vertical displacement is equal to the vertical velocity times time plus one half the vertical acceleration, which because this is on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared, or you can use 10, times the time squared. This piece, this additional distance because I'm accelerating, um, we haven't done in class, but is a standard physics equation. If you take these equations and add them along with the equation that says the acceleration due to gravity, acceleration is change in velocity, final y velocity minus initial y velocity over time, you can actually algebraically get a third equation, which is that final y velocity squared equals initial y velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration due to gravity times the displacement. So these equations might help you mathematically um, to do the problem. And that's just this, all this problem is. It's a lot of math. Fun math. In the beginning, you have calculated a velocity. And you have hopefully measured an angle. Remember when we took a force at an angle and broke it into force components? We're going to do the same thing here with velocity. We're going to break it into Vx and V initial Y. The horizontal velocity never changes, so we don't need to worry about initial or final. But vertically, once I start going, I'm going to slow down in the upward direction. At this spot, I'll have zero upward velocity, and then I'll get negative, zero veloc negative vertical velocity. So my initial and final vertical velocities will probably be different. Um, let's say my velocity here was 4 meters per second and my angle was 20 degrees. So to get Vx, that's going to be 4 cosine 20, which on my calculator is, oh, hang on, 20 cosine times 4. That's not right. 4 times the cosine of 20, 3.7, uh, 6 meters per second. And for vertically, I would like the sine of that times the hypotenuse. So that's 1.37 meters per second. Now I have Vx and Viy. And I'm going to put them into this equation. There are really two ways to do this problem. You can either start with your velocity, put these into the equation, measure something and figure out what the other thing is, you know, measure how far it goes or even measure the time of the jump or something, or you can just take these measurements because you know where they are and backtrack to get the velocity components and figure out how close your velocity is to the actual velocity. The easier way to do it is to take your velocity, break it into components and figure out what's going on. That's the easier way to do it. I'll help you do it the other way, but I'm not going to demonstrate that. So now I know, let's say I know how far it drops, delta y. Um, I'm going to go to my delta y equation. Let's say it drops 3 centimeters, 0.03 meters. So 0.03 meters is equal to my initial velocity, 1.37 meters per second, times time, plus one-half negative, and I really want to use 9.8 here because I, I want to be more accurate. And it's negative because down is always negative. Oh, and down is always negative, so I have to have a negative displacement times time squared. This is an ugly quadratic equation problem. Remember that, you know, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 2ac over minus 4ac over 2a. Yeah, you got to do that. Have fun. Once you find the time, take the time and put it into the change in position equation equals whatever my initial vertical velocity was, sorry, horizontal velocity, 3.76 meters per second, times time. 
and you'll see what comes out for the change in position. Obviously, it's not going to work out perfectly because your velocity that you calculated with energy is not the correct velocity. Um, the two correct numbers are delta x and delta y. You can put those in, find the time, and then get the velocities. That's a little harder. Um, you need to know a little bit of trig. I will totally help you with that if you want to do it that way. Um, but the easier way to do the same math and get the points is to break the velocity into components and use the vertical drop to figure out what the horizontal distance should be. And then you can say, yeah, but ours didn't go that way. So that's how we know we're not correct on our energy thing.